the way I look at integrated pest management, I start off with crop health. Uh, crop health is paramount. A lot of what we do with the fertilizer program and the planting distances and the general uh, management, these things help with pest and disease problems. So when I'm talking about integrated pest management, I always start with the crop health. And if you, and if you get that right, just general health, you will significantly reduce the problems you have with your, with your pests and diseases. So that's number one, crop health. Because often, a plant, even though it's been damaged, if it's healthy and it has a good root system, it will compensate, and so your final yields won't be, uh, won't be reduced. So this is why crop health is so important. Second is that you have to be able to identify your problem. Often if your problem is serious, it's obvious. If you have your plant completely eaten away by worms in, in pumpkin, you know what it is because there's thousands of these green worms and these white moths flying around. But that's too late. We like to try and control things before they get out of hand. Because insects, their biology means that they reproduce at a phenomenal rate. Hundreds and thousands of eggs are laid, and if you don't stop it early, it explodes and then it's too late. That's the easiest stage to identify, but we try and do it earlier. There's a lot of insects and they kind of all look the same at different stages of their lives. So we need to go in there and be able to accurately say, right, that one there is going to cause us a problem. Something I've heard a lot uh, of in Jamaica, people tell me, ah, oh, the ants are causing me problems in my crops. And in many cases, it's not the ants that are causing the problems. The problem would be the aphid because the aphid comes in, feeds on the plant, produces a sweet honeydew droplet, and that's good food for the ants. So what the ants do is that they follow the, the aphids around and feed off this honeydew. And then you also get that black uh, sooty mold that you sometimes see. I've seen it a lot on mango trees here where the leaves go all black, and that's because it's a fungus growing on the sweet, uh, sticky honeydew. So when you see this black sooty mold and you see these ants and you see your plant not doing well, you think, Oh, it's these ants that are causing all the problems, but if you look a little closer, it's these little plant lice, uh, I've heard them called, it can be yellow or green or dark on the white top or the, the, white, the white head. You see these black um, aphids running up and down or they're, they're stuck on, onto the stem. So you've got to know what, what your pest is. So that's why pest identification is very important. Another thing about insect biology is that the insects have different stages, so farmers complain about worms. I've got this worms eating this, that worms eating that. But the thing is, is that these worms are a developmental stage of the insect. The white worm becomes a moth, the white worm becomes a beetle, the worm, the leaf miner, that becomes a fly. And then the different chemical products, the different pesticides will control the different types of insects. So if you use Zentari, or dipel or agree on uh, the worms in sweet potato, they're not going to kill it because those pesticides are made to control the worms that become moths. So those would be the, the callaloo worms and the worms in, in cabbage. So pest identification is very important. N knowing the biology of the pest and also that, that you know that that's the right one. Included with pest ideas that there's so many insects in the world. There's more insects in the world than any other type of uh, any other type of organism. So there's lots of them, and you, there are always going to be some around. And you have to decide how many. Like one ant in your kitchen is that enough to spray your whole house and use all your pest or, or your bagon to control the one the one ant? Maybe not. But if there's lots of them, well then you then you decide that you want to control them. So by monitoring is the process by which you measure how many of the pest insects there are to then help you control them later on. What you need to do with monitoring is go into your field regularly, once every five days, once every ten days, once a week, and specifically go looking for the insect that you're worried about. If you know that your um, scotch bonnet pepper has problems with aphids, divide your field into quarters and then go to each quarter and then in the middle as well and look for your aphids and then if you see them then you have to make your decision whether you spray or not so what we recommend is that you go into the field in this case let's say choose five plants 
around each point, just randomly choosing that plant, that plant. Look for aphids and either say yes, they're present or no, they're not. Or if it's another insect, maybe you actually count all of them. With aphids, normally there's too many to count. And then you go to another plant, another plant, another plant. Then you go to another quarter and you do it again. And then you, can, then you, you have a good measurement of how many aphids you have in the field, if they're present at all or not. Uh, and then you decide to spray or not, or use another control measure. The aphids in uh, pepper transmit virus, so if you see an, uh, an aphid in your, in your field, then it would be good to, to spray, especially early on in the first two months after transplant, because if you don't uh, control your aphids then, it's a high possibility of getting virus and a real dramatic drop in yield. The third thing is your control decision. We like to call these thresholds. When you've done this work and you've decided, right, the pest number has reached a certain level, now I'm going to spray or now I'm going to use a control tactic. And we are trying to develop thresholds so that you can go into your field and if you count a certain number of insects, you then spray. If it's less, you can leave it for another week or another five days. But you as responsible farmers need to be using this information for yourself. You need to decide, right, I'm not going to spray every five days, even if the insect's there or not. You need to go into the field, see if it's there, decide to spray or not, based on how, how, many, uh, how many insects are there. So that's the control decision. The fourth one is the control choice. And this normally includes pesticides, but it also can include other things, like with your trap crop that you've planted along the, uh, the sides of your fields. These crops prevent insects from flying in 